fairly commonly I get contacted by people who've uh, opened up their Retina 2A to clean the rangefinder or make an adjustment and have managed to get themselves into a mess. Um, taking the top off to get to the rangefinder is pretty straightforward. You just need to be fairly careful about what you do and uh, if you follow the instructions well you shouldn't get into too much trouble. So where do we start? Well, usually I start by removing the rewind knob and the rewind knob you just need to put something through the fork to stop it rotating and you can usually spin the uh, rewind knob off with your fingers. This one's not doing it because it's a, an unusual example. I'll tell you about that in a second. Since I've got this thing off, <coughs> most rewind knobs that you'll find on the Retina 2A, the rewind knob is all of a piece. It's threaded in the centre. The pinhead screw actually screws that up, holds it all tight, and you can just screw it on and off as a piece. Briefly they experimented with some uh, cost saving measures at the, at the factory and this is an example of one which doesn't have a thread in the middle so unless this is done up tight it doesn't grip the shaft at all so it doesn't spin off quite so quickly. You don't find them very often. So the rewind knob, the collar off the top of the rewind don't lose it. The film advance. Right, swing the film advance out 90 degrees. Do this now and you'll have a lot less grief later. I'm using a tool I've made here for dealing with this pin headed screw. So remove the screw, there should be a star washer in there and it might come out with the screw, make sure you don't lose it. Lift off the film advance all at one piece, don't disassemble it. To take the top cover off, we simply have a screw at each end. top cover should lift off. Alright, things to note here, there's your rangefinder of course, whatever you're going to be doing to that you can get to. This is your shutter release button here at the front, your film release button behind it. Do what you need to do to your rangefinder and then reassemble the camera. So basically it's just the reverse of the procedure. Make sure that the flaps on the front of the shutter release button are facing to the front. Fit the top down into place. Now normally I, do, I normally put the, the advance back on at this stage, I don't put the other screws in. So just fit it back in place, you know which direction it went in. Hold it down firmly with the top of your finger, rotate the dial clockwise, that's the direction of the arrow, until you hear it click into place. It's like two ratchets there, one does the frame counter and one does the end of film lock. So holding it down, run that screw up, check rotating this clockwise, make sure that's firmly in place. Do that screw up and now I'm going to test the advance. As you can see that's quite normal in its action. At this stage all I have to do is put my screws back in at each end of the housing, 
put my rewind knob back on and the job's complete. Nice and simple, no mistakes, nothing went wrong. So what are your options if you're looking for doing things in the wrong way? Well there are plenty of options for doing things in the wrong way. The easiest thing to do is not start with your film advance at 90 degrees but to start with it back against the body. What happens then? Right, well let's go through that. So we'll remove the advance knob, the advance lever. We won't introduce any extra complications, we'll still lift it off in one piece. We've got the screws out of the end of the housings, lift the top off, do what you need to do to the rangefinder, go to reassemble the camera, put our top cover back on and attempt to fit the advance lever back in place. Well, the first thing you notice is that you can't get the bloody thing on there and that's because this has backed off a little bit. The advance has actually backed off a few degrees. You cannot physically fit the thing. If you could fit it, and you might be able to with enough wriggling, No, I can't get it on there. So that's not going to be a goer. For most people that's not a goer at all. If you are able to get it fitted back on there, you'll strike another problem anyway, and that's that it's very hard to get the end of film catch to work correctly, starting at that position. So what do you do in a case like this? Well, we have to go in and turn things to where they should have been. We can't really lose our tension here, so we know that our alignment is roughly correct. It's just that it's swung around a few degrees, enough to cause us a problem. What am I going to do now? Well, first of all, I'm going to depress this. You can depress the shutter release, you can depress the film release. That drops this down out of the way. I'm going to rotate the film advance here a few degrees. Oops. Now it's not playing the game. Let me bang that on there temporarily. I rotate that roughly 90 degrees. Now, that should bring us back to where we should have been to start off with. So I'll check my shutter releases right, put the top cover back in place. Fit my advance lever. I know it's roughly out here somewhere, that looks promising. Check that that's down in position. Run that screw up and see what I get. Good. Proper working film advance again. So that's how you'd recover from that. Basically you have to go inside, you have to rotate your film advance shaft roughly the 90 degrees that you should have started with and then come back and, and refit this arm at the 90 degree position or thereabouts. Now how else can you get into problems? Well I'll show you this one, because this is easily done. We start with our film advance swung out 90 degrees as recommended. Lift it off, take our screws out of the end housing, remove our rewind knob, all the rest of it. Finish working on the rangefinder. 
And when we go to put the top cover back on, we manage to catch the cover on the film release button. And it has the effect of doing something like this. So what's it done? Well basically it's allowed the film advance to remove to go back to the rest position or in fact you know a couple of degrees beyond the rest position making it impossible to fit the film advance. But if we don't notice that, we didn't hear that click, we take our um, film advance lever fit it at our roughly 90 degrees position where we left it get carried away there, make sure I've got that rolled down yes that's all clicked into place check it yes Certainly heard that fall into place. Snug that up and our film advance is locked up. It can't go anywhere. And that's because the inside, I'll take the top off and you can see more clearly. So what have we got here? On the inside of the camera, the position of our advance shaft is back, actually it's back beyond the normal start position. The normal start position is round about there. And it's on its return spring, it's just dropped back a couple of degrees making it impossible to move. So it cannot be advanced because it's blocked from moving. So what's our response here? Well it's the same as last time basically. We've got to rotate our film advance shaft slightly so I'm putting a bit of tension on that. Hold down my film release button to release the catch. Swing it around at 90 degrees. Lift the arm off. Pop the top on and being careful this time not to catch the film advance, film release button and we should be in business. Just have to refit my film advance lever which is at roughly 90 degrees. That's very rough but that's what it is today. Just check that everything's dropped into place. There it is. You've got to rotate that all the way around sometimes. Excuse me while I grab another pair of glasses. Check that that's in place. And it hasn't shifted. It feels promising. Film advance. Works perfectly. That's number one, so that's why that's locked. Right, so what other things can we do? Look, that's probably about it for the straightforward stuff. Let's have a talk about the inside. So I'm opening it up again. I've got this at 90 degrees. My film advance lever at 90 degrees because that's where I'd normally take it off. Lift the top cover off. So we've seen here, I'm going to zoom in a bit. So we've seen here, this at the moment is set. We've advanced it until the lever was pretty much sticking out the back of the camera. Let's just push that button down to drop it back. Okay, so assuming you'd managed to hit this, hit the film release button while you had the top off the camera, and the film advance is basically just backed up beyond the point it normally would be in its rest position. 
that's as far as it can go. It can't get any more out of sync than that. It can't back up any further than that. And it can't get disconnected. If you want to get really into trouble, there are other things you can do. Now one of them is to lift the gear off the top. If you lift the gear off the top, you've only got to lift it far enough that it loses its timing. And what have we got now? Well, we've got a film advance shaft with absolutely no tension on it because it's been allowed to just whiz around and do nothing. We have the cocking rack here, timed to nothing at all. So this is the mess that you can get into if you are, I was going to say silly enough, unaware of the risks. If you remove this gear, if you allow it to come unmeshed, that's what's going to happen. So can we recover from this without disassembling stuff? Well yes we can. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the tip of my screwdriver and cock the shutter by pushing the cam, the cocking rack down until I hear it click. It hardly made any sound, but I know that that's cocked because it's it's not dropping back. So I know the shutter's cocked now. Now the cocking rack at this stage can move freely. I didn't made a point of not pushing it all the way through. We don't want to lose the cocking rack or lose its timing with the shutter. So the cocking rack can move freely. Our film advance here has lost all its tension and we need to tension that up. And we need to get our cocking rack back in the right position. Now I know from experience that the correct position for that cocking rack will leave about an eighth of an inch or thereabouts, exposed at the back here, when the shutter is cocked. You check that. Yes, that's very roughly right. That should be okay. So we need to tension up our film advance because we've managed to lose the tension on that. So we need to rotate it in the direction that the film advance lever would rotate it. Pretty much one full turn. See if I can zoom you in a bit more. That's about it. So, how far have I rotated it? I've rotated it until this cam here drops up against that hard stop. That's a deeper step than any of the others. This is the start position for your film advance. And this is the position that the film advance would be in when the shutter is cocked, when the film advance lever is back against the body and everything is normal. So, making sure that you have your cocking rack here extended out roughly three millimeters, roughly an eighth of an inch, perhaps slightly less than that, and holding the film advance rotated counterclockwise against that stop I'm going to try and drop that gear in place that's engaged and looks looks probably correct now I'm going to refit the rewind knob, the advance knob, and we still have to see how we get on. So I'm going to rotate the film advance about 90 degrees as before. Where are we? Got to press that down to the bottom level, that's right. About 90 degrees. I'm going to refit my advance knob, hold it down, rotate that frame counter 
clockwise till I hear it click. Run the screw in, and I should be either correct or within a tooth of correct timing with the cocking rack. I can't complete that stroke. That tells me that I'm on one tooth out. So I've depressed the film release button. That releases the film advance. So I'll swing my lever out 90 degrees because that's where I want to start and finish things. Lift the screw out, lift the film advance lever off, and now I've got to reposition my gear by one tooth. Right, so I've got to reposition that gear, and I have to think about how I'm going to do this and what I'm wanting to achieve. So first of all, I'm just going to press down my film release button here and allow the film advance to return to its something like its rest position. I'm checking what we've got. And I'm looking at the state of the cam at this point. Now the position of the cam at this point here is exactly where it would be if the shutter was cocked. And I'm looking at the position of the cocking rack as it extends out, out the back here, and I believe that it's one tooth too far advanced because I wasn't able to complete the film advanced stroke. So holding the tension on that advanced shaft with my finger, I'm going to lift the gear off here move my rack in, which will turn this gear here by one tooth drop my gear back in place if I can It's one of these jobs you probably need three hands. Oh, there we go. Now, you can see, or you may be able to see, that I've got less cocking rack sticking out the back here now. So I've shifted the position of the, the gear here by one tooth. Now if I put that spacer back on the top, our advance at this stage is set in the position it would be if the film advance lever is in the normal rest position. So I want to rotate it 90 degrees. Or thereabouts. So I've rotated it about 90 degrees. It's a bit more than 90 degrees, I can tell by the angle of the squared off top. Clipped into place, I heard that click. Check that, it seems good. Now I want to see if I can complete the advanced stroke. I can. And fire the shutter. I can. So here we've recovered from the problem caused by allowing that gear to come adrift and lose the timing. And we've done it without having to disassemble the mechanism any further. So that's how you'd recover from it. 
I'm going to remove the film advance lever now. I've got it at the 90 degree position again. I saw that washer get away. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Stuck here, found that. Right. Make sure the film advances, the shutter release is positioned correctly, that the and everything else is good. Pop the top down in place. Pop my film advance lever back on. Rotate the frame counter till I hear it click. There's my washer. Check that again to make sure that everything's in place. Tighten that up. All good. Need to put the screws in place. If I can line the holes up. Rewind knob. Well, as I said, this is an unusual example because it's got. I have to use the pin spanner to tighten that up. And there we have it. That's how you take the top cover off correctly, how you put it back on correctly, how the, uh, and how to recover when you've done something else, something that you either shouldn't have allowed to happen. Are there other complications, other potential complications? Well unfortunately there are, and I'll go into them now. So what other trouble can you get into when you've got the top off? Well one of the things that you can do, let's start here. And I won't go through the whole nine yards of demonstrating this because I don't want to have to dig myself out of all sorts of trouble. We remove our advance knob. Move our rewind now. Take the screws out of the top cover, take that collar off. What other nightmares lurk under here? All right. This shutter release button. 
nice and straightforward. You'd think there wasn't much to go wrong with that. On the Retina 2A, it has a little collar on it. It sits on the top. That collar is very important. Its purpose is to stop the film, the shutter release here, from being able to lift out too far. If the shutter release lifts high enough, it will rotate. Its guide pin here can lift out of that hole, and if the shaft rotates slightly, you'll find that the shutter may be cocked, but there's no way of depressing the shutter release because the shaft isn't lined up with the hole. And that can happen if that collar is missing when you've put the top back on. So that's something to be aware of and it's certainly something that can cause you an awful lot of grief if you don't know about it. What other things can go wrong? Be aware that the shutter release shaft on the Retina 2A often has a tiny washer, spacer, down where it couples to the mechanism at the back of the struts. If you lift this shaft out or allow it to fall out, that little spacer, which is just like a thick washer, can fall out. It can lift off with this and then fall out, get lost in the guts. If that happens, what you'll discover is that you can cock the shutter, but it doesn't want to release from the shutter button. You can press the button down, but as far as it gets to the end of its travel, and it still hasn't released the shutter. So you have to be very careful not to lift out the shutter release shaft, or you are liable to disturb that washer if it's present, and it's certainly not on all of them. And uh, if you pull that washer out accidentally, it'll drop down to the back of the bellows, you won't see it. Sometimes you've got to dismantle the entire camera to find it. Um, it's certainly a nuisance and it's certainly something you need to be aware of. So that's certainly another way you can dig yourself into trouble. So I'll pop the top back on here while all the going's good and hopefully I'll be in business. You can see as I'm putting that top back on the film release button is just catching on the, the top there. If I continued to press it down, it would almost certainly would have released that film advance and then I'd have had to go through the business of uh, taking the top off, shifting things 90 degrees and putting it back again. It's as easy as that to um, get into a little bit of trouble, but it's not technically difficult to dig yourself out. Certainly, you do not need to remove any screws or dismantle the film advance mechanism in there any further to recover from just minor issues like having rotated the film advance more than you should. Right, so I'll lock that off. And I'll tighten up my film rewind knob. If I can get the pin spanner to drop in there, I can. Two screws on the top cover. cover. Well, he doesn't want to pick up. These chrome screws in the top cover of the Retina 2A and 1A have rather a short threaded 
section on them and they're certainly not interchangeable with the similar looking screws from the Retina 3C. Now the reason they're short is quite important. If they are longer, if you put a longer screw in there, it actually catches on the film advance mechanism inside and stops things from being able to move. So this camera is all back together. Um, are there even other ways you could get into trouble? Yes, but you have to work at it. I don't want to cover those today because I'd be here all day. Thanks for watching.